All right, as usual, I'm going to let you take a little look at these questions, try and understand them. I'm going to be focusing on the apply ones. Um, the answers to these can all be found in the book, but these ones are for the people who want to have a little bit of extra challenge. So, um, let's have a look at the first one. Why must phloem have a nucleus? Well, phloem must have a nucleus because xylem isn't about one directional flow. Uh, pardon me, phloem isn't about one directional flow. Phloem has to have movement from the leaves to the tips of the plant and also down here to the roots. So it takes a little bit more than just being a straw and sucking up water. So my nucleus has to decide whether or not my mitochondria and my um, active, ca my carrier proteins here are going to pump sucrose up to the um, leaf or down to the roots. So it's a question of necessity and need. So the nucleus decides uh, direction of flow. <coughs> And it does this through a whole load of different chemical um, uh, reactions and cascades, and it can tell whether or not more sucrose or glucose is needed here. Um, these are uh, carrier proteins, or, or pumps, if you want to call them that, and they will decide where the, um, where the, where the, the sucrose is going to get pumped. Okay, so remember, it's all about sucrose and not about glucose here. Even though the mitochondria themselves use glucose, the sucrose is the thing that's going to get pumped up or down. And the nucleus of this cell controls the activities of this cell here, the sieve cell. Um, I can't believe I'm saying that wrong. The sieve cell. Um, and, and the sieve cell is where the actual movement happens. But the, the companion cell here pumps up or down. Um, explain why a plant in the Amazon could lose less water than a plant in hull. Well, this one's actually quite simple, and it's nothing to do with plants. It's all to do with a concentration gradient. So this is um, sunny hull, and this is um, L hollow um, in Brazil. Okay, so this is the Amazon rainforest and this is hull. Now, inside my plant here, there's a high concentration of water. Out here, in, even though it seems quite wet all the time, it's not very humid in the atmosphere, so it's not humid, uh, which means that there is a low concentration of water here in my, um, in my atmosphere. So what happens? Evaporation, diffusion, the movement of high to low concentration, there is a less concentrated amount of water in the atmosphere here, allowing there to be a lot of transpiration from the ground, roots, xylem, out evaporating through the leaf um, into the environment. Now the thing is, in El Hollow, in deepest, darkest um, Brazil, there, yeah, there's a high concentration of water here in the plant, but there's not that much of a difference because it's very, very humid inside the Amazon rainforest. Um, I think as high sometimes as 68% humidity and, uh, and more than that, which means for every um, three, uh, for every seven tenths of air, for every set, like for every ten satchels of air, seven of those is water. So it's it's very, very humid and muggy, which means that there's not so much of a concentration gradient. You can see, that, I mean, it's just a, a, a symbol, but you can see the difference there, which means that the transpiration from the roots up through the xylem, out through the leaf and evaporation, um, is a lot harder because it is very humid out there in the rainforest. Um, why might a bamboo grow faster than other plants? And this was looking at limiting factors. Well, it's, it's again nothing to do with bamboo itself. Um, it's to do with this, this very simple fact of, of, of limiting factors. So if you get something like a, a spider plant, a spider plant will increase its photosynthesis up until it hits its limiting factor. And at that point, um, there will be no increase in overall um, photosynthesis. Now remember that photosynthesis makes glucose. Um, which I will abbreviate to GLU, GLU. That glucose can be used to make cellulose, which I will abbreviate to cell. And I'll write this spelling out for you. So the glucose here is going to get turned into the cellulose there. And that is going to be used for growth. Um, the glucose is also going to be used for respiration um, and for active transport in the uh, root hair cells. So respiration, active transport, root hair cells. The awesome thing that bamboo does is it's got an insane limiting factor. Like it just it doesn't really have one. So as you increase the amount of light, bamboo doesn't care, it keeps on going and going and going and going and going, and then it will begin to limit off. So this means that my bamboo is able to make a lot more glucose with a much higher um, limiting factor of, of light. A spider plant is going to be able to make much less. So this is the difference between a spider plant and normal plant and the um, 
and the bamboo. Now, the more glucose the bamboo makes, the more cellulose it can make to make its cell walls, the more respiration for energy for growth, and the more active transport it can have in its root hair cells to get more minerals in. <clears throat> If I shaved the root hair cells, what would happen to the plant? Well, it wouldn't be happy because the root hair cells are what give us a large surface area. Because remember, in biology, the bigger the surface area, the bigger the reaction um, uh, generally. The bigger the reaction, the bigger the absorption, the bigger the, the, the everything. So surface area is good. If I was to remove these root hair cells, then there would be less of a surface area. If I reduce the surface area, um, I reduce the surface area, I reduce the amount of osmosis, and I reduce the amount of mineral salts. Remember, osmosis is the movement of water from a high free water concentration to a low free water concentration. So this osmosis is going to be less because of a, of a surface area that is decreased, which will ultimately lead to less water diffusing into the xylem and being taken through the transpiration stream transpiration stream Oops, stream um, and ultimately my plant isn't going to have water for photosynthesis so there'll be less water uh, for photosynthesis which I'll abbreviate to photo um, and there'll be less mineral salts for protein synthesis which I will call protein um, and I'll just put a big etc there, because if there's no mineral salts, nothing's going to happen. Um, xylem is the shoelace, and phloem is the... I have no idea. I just kind of made that one up. If anyone came up with a really good answer, I'd be delighted to see it. Um, there's a prize of, oh, I don't know, 20 vivos slash a Belgian chocolate for anybody who uh, can come up with something there that I think is halfway impressive, because I sure could... Uh, why would blocking the xylem kill the leaf, even if we dripped water in for photosynthesis? Well, it's simple, isn't it? Or is it? Why would, xylem, why would this kill the leaf? So what normally happens, I've got my osmosis here, and then osmosis through my cells until I get here to the xylem. So osmosis, osmosis. Uh, here my water is getting taken up through the transpiration stream, which I will write out in full. Uh, the transpiration stream eventually ends up here in the plant, where after evaporation, which I will hard shorten down to evaporation, the stream continues in some one way thing. Um, so yeah, okay, I get water up here for my photosynthesis. Water and carbon dioxide react to form glucose and oxygen. Uh, photosynthesis word equation and simple equation because, you know, I can do what I want. What's the problem? I'm getting my water here through the transpiration stream. The problem is, and if you can remember your, 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 your little bottle of, you know, millennial Volvic or whatever, water it is that you drink, um, mineral water, you know, they make a big deal of it right there in the label. It's like, oh, look at us, it's mineral water. Mineral water isn't that impressive. Uh, if anything, min water without minerals in it is much more impressive because water is so good at dissolving these minerals. So not only do I have osmosis moving water up through my plant, I've also got the root hair cells using active transports, which I'll abbreviate to AT, to move in mineral salts. And these mineral salts dissolve into the water and get carried up here to the leaf, giving it the essential nutrients it needs for growth and repair. These nutrients could be things like nitrates um, or phosphates. Um, and they allow my plant to grow so it's not just water that we need for photosynthesis. Well, it's water and carbon dioxide we need for photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is very important, but it's not just that that we need for a healthy plant. We also need these mineral salts that are actively transported into the cells and then are dissolved in the water, um, which then travels, carries it not only up to the uh, leaf up here, but also through the pores in the xylem uh, to other points of the plant. Um, same going for water as well. Water and the mineral salts will come out. So there you have it. And if you've got any questions about any of these, um, go to the book. If you still got any questions about any of these, then you can come and see me. And if you've got any questions about these, uh, go to MC Kelby.